My mother-in-law wants to have my children taken because of my childhood. My mother-in-law and I have not always seen eye to eye on how to raise my son. My wife and I have been united on how to raise out kid, but she knows best. The sub raised by narcissists would fit her well. Anyways it started two weeks ago when she was at our house watching our son while the wife and I went out for dinner and a movie. Mill found a book that I have been reading about childhood sex abuse and how to recover from it. I was sexually abused as a child by a daycare worker and I have been seeing a therapist about it and she has been wonderful in helping me. Up to this point only four people know this has happened to me. My wife, mother, therapist, and my best friend. Now my mill knows and has been telling everyone on her side of the family to keep me away from their kids. Some of the family members have stated that they do not want us around anymore, others have reached out or called us in support. It ended up being the ones we liked supported us and the ones we did not like did not support us so no love lost there. The past week has also been a legal nightmare because the mill also called CPS to report that I might be abusing my son since I was abused myself. CPS has visited my house asking to come in. I have told them no they cannot come in my house without a warrant and to come back when they had one. I called a lawyer that deals with this my mom had his number form 20 years ago story to follow. Since then CPS has knocked on the doors of my neighbors and asked about how I was treating my son. I know this because I work from home and could see her going door to door and one of the neighbors asked what was going on and why were they asking. I have very little faith in CPS as a teacher thought my dad was abusing me when I was younger and called them into school to do an interview. I had a black eye from wrestling practice, the CPS worker asked if my dad was abusing me and I just started crying, she took that as an admission of guilt that I was being abused. What I could not tell them because I was crying was that my dad had died three weeks earlier but luckily the principal was in the room and was able to tell her that there is no way he could have done that as he is dead, the focus then shifted to my mother. It was a long week, but we got through it and were cleared as the coach and the person that gave me the black eyed given statements. My wife and I now want to exclude the mill from ever seeing our son again as she has breached our trust. I do not have a lot of money to pay this lawyer for a drawn out battle with CPS. Is there a way to legally say my mill cannot and will not have access to our son if we are living or dead? Side note question. What are the odds of a prosecutor taking on a case that happened such a long time ago 20 plus years but within the statute of limitations in Ohio? What I have read is not really promising. Thank you in advance for your help. Update 1. I forgot my password to the first account. I wanted to give an update for everyone going into the weekend. This is a good update. My lawyer and I spoke to the CPS rep and provided all of my son's medical records, and showed every time he went to the doctor, urgent care, ECT. CPS also did a walk through the house with the lawyer present and overall the visit went real well. The agent found a few small places for improvement but nothing that was of concern. About two weeks after the visit, one week ago, I got another visit from the same CPS agent saying that more accusations have been made against me and my wife this time and that they have to investigate again. I asked if the accuser was my mill and they could not confirm who made the accusation, but my wife called her mother and she did confirm that it was her mother that made the call again. My wife was on the phone with my mill while the CPS agent was in the house. I had my wife put her on speakerphone so the CPS agent could hear both sides of the conversation. My wife then asked why are you making false statements to the police and CPS. My mill response was that since I molested as a child I was 100% going to do it to my son and she wants to protect him. My wife then asked a very pointed question of, so you lied to the police and to CPS to further your agenda against my husband? The mill response was yes I lied, but it was for, child's name, safety. At that point the CPS agent had heard enough filled out some forms and left. My wife and I were beyond mad about how brazen the mill has been acting. I ended up getting a call from the CPS agent and she told me that she had relayed the details of the conversation to my local police department since the mill had called them to make a report. She said to speak to Detective Bob, not his real name. I reached out to Detective Bob and sat down with him, my wife and lawyer. We ended up filing a report about the false accusations. The good thing in my city is that the police take a no-nonsense approach to false accusations and will go after people that do make them. The police did interview my mill and she did admit to making false statements and lying to police about the about. She now has been charged with falsifying a police report and making one other charge that I forget at the moment, but she has been charged. One aside note Detective Bob was very supportive of me when he found out that the reason why my mill was making the reports was due to me being molested as a child. He provided phone numbers for help and even brought in a counselor if I needed to talk to one. I was very surprised of how he treated me with respect throughout the whole process. My wife and I have also sat down with an estate lawyer and completely written her out of our life and stated that she is to not have custody of our son. 
we listed other family members to take care of our son if we both die and the other members have agreed to do this. We have also decided to file a small claims court case against the mill for lawyer fees that we had to pay to cover ourselves. The lawyer did agree to keep the fees to the max for small claims in Ohio. Thank I you everyone my for your help and support. Weird and told her to back off. My partner, Noel, M36, and I, F34, have decided recently to employ a nanny to look after our three children, Alburn, M14, Nadine, F8, and Magda, F4. Noel's work schedule is super chaotic, he's gone every few weeks or so on business trips to other countries. I, on the other hand, have too many social engagements and projects to complete to provide adequate attention to the kids. Our search for a nanny was a bit tragic, the first two seemed awfully too uptight and another seemed too young. Noel brought up a friend's younger sister who trained as a nanny at an institute, we contacted her and she has been employed with us for the past year. The nanny, Jeannie, F26, started off as being a godsend. The children's manners improved a great deal, they started excelling in schoolwork, even Albert became friendly with her and stopped sulking in his room as much to hang out with her. She really became a part of the family, even Noel, who's the moodiest and most introverted man I know, got to know her quite well. I'd even take her on days out shopping. Over time though, I feel as though she has gotten too involved, and it's made her start acting strange. I'm currently pregnant with Noel and I's fourth child, Jeannie has taken that as a cue to take over my usual roles for some reason. I used to get up each morning to make Noel breakfast, during the weeks he was home and yet now, she's already in there cooking by the time I get down to the kitchen. I used to go up on the third floor each night to read Magda and Nadine bedtime stories before they fell asleep, and Jeannie has now overtaken that. The worst was when I took Albert out for dinner, our conversation turned to Jeannie. He was practically singing her praises, before saying that she was like a mother to him. Another day, I heard Magda refer to Jeannie as mummy. That was my final straw. I took Jeannie out for a meal and over it I confronted her. I told her that she was acting strange, as if she was trying to replace me in my roles. I told her that I don't know if she has a thing for Noel or not, but she needs to back off. My children are mine, she is just a nanny. It upset her terribly, she started crying and saying that I was unreasonably mean to her. I guess once we got home, she also went crying to Noel, who confronted me. He said that I had no right to say anything like that to Jeannie, it's totally unprofessional, especially since she's just trying to lighten my workload. My mother agrees with him, but my friends are all on my side. Am I the a-hole? I told her that I'm never going to want anything serious because she's a single mom. I've been seeing this woman for around six months now. We met at a business event in the city after a mutual friend of ours introduced us. We kicked it off very well and soon after, started hooking up. She's a very intelligent and quick-witted gal and she's a catch in every sense of the word but she has a child, five years old, from a previous relationship. After our first night at my place, she asked me what the deal was with us. I said that I'm not looking for anything serious and she said the same so we agreed to just keep our relationship to casual sex. I have nothing against single moms, more power to them but I would never have a relationship with one. Too much baggage emo but, that's just me. Last night, we were having a chat over a glass of wine at my apartment and she asked me if I wanted to take our relationship to the next level. I said no, I never really gave it any thought. I'm happy with what we're doing now. She said that she really liked me and wanted something more out of it than just casual sex. I told her that I wasn't interested in anything more. If you want something more, you'd have to pursue that with someone else. She said but why? We get along really well, we have the same interests, similar outlooks for the future, marriage, kids etc. I said yeah but I just don't think we're compatible. She kept pressing me over an explanation and I told her that I didn't have one. Sometimes a no is just a no and that's that. She continued to bug me about it and then finally I just told her that I would never consider anything serious with her because she has a child with another man. I don't want to be a father and raise a kid that's not mine. I don't want your ex stuck in our lives forever. If I ever have kids, which I want to, it'll be with a woman who only has my children. She got very upset about all this and perhaps, I was a bit harsh in my delivery but that's only because I was agitated from her pressing me. She started crying and said that she felt used and betrayed but I never promised her anything. We literally agreed to keep our relationship to just sex, I don't see how I did anything wrong here. I don't think I let her on at all but she insisted that I did her wrong. Ida?